Hey everybody, it's Gypsy. Well, today is the first day since my surgery, which was this past uh, February 1st, what, oh, today's May 27th, um, that I am going to be home alone overnight. I have, since being discharged from the skilled nursing facility, I have been alone during the day. Um, but I've never been home like all day by myself. Um, but today it will be, well, from 10 o'clock this morning until sometime tomorrow afternoon, um, I'm going to be home alone. And so this is like a test for me because my family, none of us ever, well, I do now stay in one place for very long. There's a lot of traveling and stuff. So I knew it was coming, so this will be a good task for me. But today, what I wanted to talk about is I've watched so many videos and read blogs about people who have had the same injury as I have. Now, everybody talks about the, the physical part, what it's like physically, how it changes your life physically and stuff. Nobody ever talks about the emotional part. Um, first I'd like to say this was, okay, 58 years old. I have never broken a bone before in my life and I have never had surgery, especially major surgery in my life. So this was definitely different for me. My entire life has changed. I mean, in a split second like that, my life changed. So it's very... It's all still very surreal to me. I cannot believe I'm back in Ohio because I had never planned to come back to Ohio. Um, my personal life is not what I expected it was going to be. Nothing. And um, I'd say most of that part is, is good. It ended up good. But when I fell, I now remember, one, hearing the break and shatter, you know, it was a weird sound, it was loud. And I looked down at my leg and like, all right, this is the top of my leg. Well, from the knee down, it was crooked, facing sideways, including my kneecap and pointed out like that. I thought I was going to throw up. Now, I looked away because I couldn't stand looking at it. but. I kind of, I, I wiped it from my memory. It was like immediately I forgot what I just saw because all right, I lived out in the middle of the high desert, in the middle of nowhere, no one's around. And I was outside and I had to get back into my trailer because that's where my phone was. I had no way of getting help. So I do have a habit whenever I need to do this, my mind is very good at come caught compartmentalizing so I had to do that so I could get back to the trailer which was not easy and if you want to hear how I did it what happened I will have that video referenced at the end of this um, it was really hard but by the time I did get into the trailer I had myself convinced that I just knocked my kneecap out of place because um Maybe because it was on the side of my leg at first that I, well, assumed that because it was true at first. <laughs> Anyways, the damage was worse than I had assumed. My first emotion was, I'm never going to walk again. I'll never be able to walk again. And then after I convinced myself it was just my kneecap, I, I was like, my attitude was different until I got to the hospital. Um, and it was a gradual buildup of, you know, telling me how bad the situation was. Because at first, oh, you just broke your tibia plateau, we'll do surgery. But then every time they looked or like talked to a different doctor or, you know, like my surgeon obviously was um, an expert in that injury. So when he said, he's like, huh, no. <laughs> so emotionally, Everything was very, I felt uh, confused. 
uh, very, um, it was like everything was mass chaos for me. When I found out how bad the injury was, because my doctor did explain to me, because, you know, it was like in between the time I fell, by the time I got surgery, I had so many input from so many different people who had had this surgery that I couldn't figure out why mine seemed to be different. Um, I had two people tell me, well, they had it and they didn't need surgery. And, you know, they, you know, it was not a bad recovery and they were fine and everything. And I was like, well, why do I need surgery? And then I was told, you know, six weeks non-weight bearing, then I could start walking again, etc. And it's 12 weeks. Okay, now I'm at what, 16 weeks? I'm still not really walking. I'm using a walker. Now, when somebody tells me walking, I, I mean real walking without an aid, okay? That's how delusional I have been through this whole thing. And every time I am, the medical people, you know, medical professionals will like, Michelle, no, <laughs> that's not the way it is. But anyways, um, I was really afraid. I remember my first emotion was a fear of never walking again. Then I went from that to the extreme other side where, oh no, this is going to be easy. I'm going to be back on my feet in no time, etc. And I kept going back and forth between that. But a um, few days after surgery, when my doctor came into the hospital room, when I was a little bit more coherent, he set me straight. He says, no, this is going to be a very long and difficult recovery. He says, um, you know, when I saw the, uh, the scan, and I opened you up. I saw that the damage was much worse than what the x-rays indicated. So I'm going to have to have you be non-weight bearing for 12 weeks. And then you could start walking again or working on walking, I should say, because you don't start walking immediately is what I have found out. So after he told me that, I started to go into a very deep depression. Because the first thing they asked me is what my life was like. And they were like, oh boy, we're going to have trouble with this one. <laughs> I guess, you know, I lived alone in the middle of the high desert, in my travel trailer, off grid, uh, just to get water. I would have to hitch up my flatbed trailer to my truck with the 250 gallon water tote on it. Go in, I would have to go town. If there was a church, I would go there. And fill it up and then haul it back home, fill my and transfer it into my trailer and my other 250 gallon tote, go back, fill it up again, and then put it in the tote I had for my garden area. This requires jumping up and down off this trailer. It's it's difficult and very physical. So when I had talked about, uh, when was this, like in March, I was talking about, or April, you know, getting back to my own life and everything, my son was like, um, how do you think with that leg you're going to get up and down off your, off your trailer to, to do the water? How are you going to do that? You know, I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, and, and um, my doctor, you know, I, I told him I was, you know, building a homestead. And I had all these, bought all these seeds. I just bought all these seeds. That week I was about ready. I was going to go to the store and get these stuff to start the foundation for my tiny cabin. And I was excited about that. So those were all the plans I had. And my doctor looked at me. Oh, Miss Mariana is moving everything around. Come here, baby. She's usually sleeping at this time. I don't know what she's doing now. She's wide awake. The other two are sleeping. Um, you know, so he told me. He says, no. He said, you cannot do these things for at least a year. Your recovery is going to take a year. He says, you could start weight bearing and learning to walk in 12 weeks. He said, but full recovery is a year. And he said, for the way you live and the work you have to do to live that way, you need that year. He says, I'm going to say at least. 
He said, but you know, let's wait and see what happens. This caused me to go into a deep depression because I was having a good time. I was enjoying what I was doing. So they actually sent in the hospital psychiatrist to talk to me. I was reading my records and what did they say? I'd become melancholy or something like that. Um, because I was very depressed that, I mean, in a split second, my life changed so quickly. I also had never experienced such severe physical pain in my life um, or I had surgery. So this is a first for me. I had never spent such, such a significant amount of time and narcotics to deal with severe pain. So all of this was affecting me, and you guys know I don't like pharmaceuticals. Um, I'm done with them now. I'm not taking them. I'm not taking any kind of pharmaceutical now. Um, but the depression was what I remember. And then after I left the hospital where I had surgery, they sent me to a rehab hospital where I spent 10 days. I worked really hard there because I kept thinking I'm going to leave here and being able to drive and I'm going to have my life back. So when I left, she's like, no, nobody in your condition leaves here driving. She says, no, you can't go back to what you're doing. Okay. So they had sent me into another tailspin. At this point, my son and daughter-in-law picked me up in New Mexico to bring me back to Ohio, which was a huge change because I had not planned on coming back to Ohio. Um, but I have nobody in Ohio to, well, take care of me. I needed, well, at that point, full-time care. I could do very little for myself, very little. I was just learning how to get in the bathroom by myself. You know, it was like, wow, now I do, I could do a lot more on my own. Um, so coming back up here, I was, had a lot of fear. Um, I, I don't, and I still feel this way a little, not fear, but I still don't know what, what direction my life is going in. So coming back up here, we drove and just, I, I kept thinking, what's going to happen to me? There was a thought that kept going through my head. I'm used to being very independent and doing my own thing. Uh, prior to this, I was a nomad for four years traveling the country with my truck and my travel trailer alone by myself. I was used to that. And all I kept thinking was, what's going to happen to me? So when I got up here, there was, well, I ended up in the hospital for, I think, seven days because I had a blood clot. And then they wanted to place me in a skilled nursing facility. So seven days there, then I went to the skilled nursing facility, which was fine at first. Then I started to give everybody hell because I did not like that I was still in a house medical institution. By this point, it was at least a month. I did not like, I felt like people were controlling my life. I had no control over what I ate in the food at this place. It wasn't very good and it wasn't really healthy. It wasn't used to what I was um used to what I was eating you know and then I was still on oxycodone which messes with your stomach on top of eating stuff I'm not used to so my stomach was a mess um I'm a smoker thankfully they do let you go out and smoke but it's on a schedule well I'm like I am 58 years old how can you tell me when I can and cannot smoke you know, and how can you tell me when I can and cannot do this and that? And it was very difficult for me. And I wanted to leave. And at this point, we had no idea where I was going after I was released from there. I mean, discharged, sorry. <laughs> Freudian stuff. <laughs> Anyways, so I was very frightened. And I, in while I was in the skilled nursing facility... All I kept thinking was, no, this is wrong for me. I can't do this. I got to get back to New Mexico. I need to get my truck and my trailer. Well, my trailer was still in Kansas City waiting to be fixed. Remember, the axle broke on the highway on the way to Ohio. So I didn't have that, but I figured if I could just get in the truck and get, you know, 
and get back to New Mexico. Maybe I can figure out a way to be self-sufficient. And my social worker at the skilled nursing facility was terrified. She goes, Michelle, where's your truck? And, and I said, well, it's, it's at my ex's, my, my son and Nick's husband kind of have this property together. And I told her it was there. And she goes, are you sure it's not here? I said, it's not. She goes, good. And then she calls my son and says, you might want to hide your mother's truck keys. Because she's thinking about taking off and she's in no condition to do that. That's how, I mean, just depressed and everything it was. You know, I just felt so controlled. I'm thinking, I'm an adult. And everybody's doing things for me. Everybody is telling me what to do. And when I leave here, where am I going? What's going to happen to me? I was so terrified. So terrified. It was really hard. That first part with the, you know, being in two hospitals, in, in two rehab facilities for that long. I'd never been anywhere for that long. Um, you know, in a hospital situation. It was different for me. My depression really, really got depressed. Gained a lot of weight, too, because, well, you're not being active in they're eating, I was eating junk at the hospital, whatever it was. I don't know what it was. <laughs> it was always, it was always a surprise meal because you, even while you were eating it, you didn't know what it was. <laughs> and, um, you know, so it was, uh, it was hard. So when I left, when I was discharged, we had had a plan by then, and I was much more comfortable with that. Since that time, my life has improved immensely. I've been having, I've actually been having a good time and having fun. Um, also, all right, since that time, I've had in-home health care. Uh, I have a nurse that comes to see me once a week. I had occupational therapy come. And now I have my nurse and physical therapy come twice a week. So I have relearned, well, I have learned skills, how to do things, basic things around the house while in this condition. And when, it, for, when I first got here, it was like, well, it was mostly the wheelchair. Well, now, especially now after the doctor said I can wait there, um, I'm doing more. Now it's like I'm walking with the walker, if that makes sense. Still can't put full weight on my leg. It's getting stronger, but it's still weak. So now I made a point where I am doing more of what is truly Michelle. Okay. So here we are 16 weeks later. And I'd say this week, especially I've noticed this past week, I've been doing more things that uh, are truly me. Because I can now. I have been doing a lot of crocheting, which is really me. And of course that, yes, I can um, do with my leg elevated or when I need or whatever. And also, well, I'm no longer on narcotics, narcotics, so I can crochet. It's not as easy as everybody thinks. Uh, let's see. I've started cooking. Yesterday was the first time I baked. Uh, in the kitchen is difficult. Um, I mean, it's easier now because I can balance myself, but not for very long. So I get very tired. Both legs will get tired and the other one will, you know, the bad one just hurts. Ian, it's tired. The good one gets tired. Um, and we don't have a big enough kitchen that I can move the chair to like in front of the stove if I need to be there. I have it at the end of the counter at the end of the kitchen. So like if I'm mixing things like baking or have to mix something, I could sit there if I'm preparing something. But if I have to stir something at the stove, like I'm making chicken fried with a, with a milk gravy, uh, I think Thursday I'm going to make it. I'm going to have to be at the stove stirring the gravy and stuff. So um, it's going to be hard, but I have to get used to it, trying to get used to it. And then let's see, I'm mending my family's clothes. Um, what else have I done? I'm well, I got my little garden set up. I just put uploaded a short about that. I don't have plants in it and everything. I'll show you guys that later, but I showed you the setup I have going on so that I can garden without doing that. Um, 
we had two weeks ago a huge family celebration the four of us um so my point is you know i'm sewing i'm crocheting i'm gonna get back to my art i have to get some supplies cooking baking doing my own laundry i can my god you guys with a walker and it's set my balance is getting better i can change the sheets on the bed and do laundry this gradual buildup of getting back to myself has improved my mood i'm no longer depressed okay which is why i was almost looking forward to him going and meeting our kids uh, for that they went down to Columbus he, well you know my son and daughter-in-law are truckers and so he went down to Columbus to meet our son and daughter-in-law to go to the George Strait concert um, and it's like I'm I I'm a, I looked forward to it because I couldn't wait to see what it was like to be alone again like overnight um, it's strange uh, and it's only for you know like little over 24 hours I know I'll be fine um, a month ago I would have been in tears about it I would have so you know it's like things are different now it's if you have a traumatic injury whatever it may be but I, I can only really speak on this injury it's the only one I've ever had um, you have to give it time. I know I was angry and jealous because most people, well, at six weeks are able to wait here and start working and walking. I had to wait for 12 weeks. And then I felt like the skilled nursing facility was holding me back on um, things. And I was angry and I was jealous and I was afraid my leg would atrophy to the point I couldn't use it anymore, etc. What I'm saying is if you have these injuries, you have to give yourself time one to heal and when you start working in physical therapy and things in occupational therapy have patience with yourself you're going to get back to yourself i don't know that i will ever have the homestead of my dreams at least not anytime soon from what i hear from others who have gone through this and their injury was not quite as severe as mine they do get back to their life but it's slow okay so even after a year uh maybe your extreme sports you're getting back into that but you have to make modifications okay so for me to do a homestead alone i don't know that i would be able to do that for at least two years because although i would have the stamina and everything to do it this knee is going to give me problems jumping up and down that off my flatbed trailer is not it's still going to give me an issue from what I have heard from others who are way ahead of me on this. Uh, I was told by medical professionals, my knee is going to be a lifelong problem, an issue for me for the rest of my life. So, you know, there's modifications and things like that. But the real me is back doing my, living my passions. I'm, you know, I'm even thinking about getting a cheap sewing machine just to keep myself busy with that. You know, crocheting, crafting, cooking, baking, sewing, gardening. I'm just like getting back to me. The only things I cannot do is like, I can't sweep the floor. I can't wash the floor yet. I am at some point today going to go in and clean the bathroom. But I can't wash a floor and I can't wash a tub either. I could do the rest of it though. Anything that I have to get low down. So the sweeper, because you know, the vacuum in the in a broom, because I have to use a walker is difficult now. I'm working towards moving up to a cane. So back, you know, by that time I should be able to sweep, I hope. I don't know. But I am going to get a scrub brush with a long handle on it so I can clean. Things like that. So I'm starting to feel like me again. 
I'm starting to feel like I have worth and that I'm being less of a burden to my family, which every time I felt like I was burdened, I was told I am not, even though I felt like it. And that's a big issue too. When you have these injuries, I think a lot of the depression and self-esteem is because you can't do things for yourself. You feel worthless, and especially if you are a woman. Because when I worked for hospice, my patients, it was always the women who said, I'm being a burden on my family. Where my male patients were like, oh, I've had a great life. I'm ready. Yeah. And the women are going, my, my family needs a break. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you do feel that way. And that causes depression. But what you have to remember with an injury like this, it's not forever. It's not. Yes, I'm going to have problems with this leg all my life. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> In a way, I started out that way because on that same leg, I, I was born with a dislocated hip. And although they fixed it, I've had bursitis since the age of 12. Now I have bursitis and osteoarthritis in that hip. And now, and this is my left hip, and on my left knee, well, and my tibia, my left tibia I shattered and fracture. I had a few fractures and it was shattered. They had to reconstruct the tibia and then put the plate in they said you know that's going to be an issue so i don't know what they mean by that it's going to be an issue like my hip has been for the for my entire life which to me was no big deal because that was since i was a baby i was used to it i don't know what to expect and i don't know where my life is going so i can't say i have depression anymore i'm very happy now and i can't say i have fear it's just a very strange feeling not to know where i'm going uh, with my life. So it's like, I'm waiting to see, all right, well, six from, months from now, what will it be like for me? A year from now, what will it be like for me? I'm basing everything on the condition of my leg and how far I've come in my recovery. So that's a little nerve wracking for me. But what I'm saying, just be patient with yourself. Be loving with yourself. Um, you'll heal. It's going to take time and a lot of hard work and it's painful when you get to the weight bearing part physical therapy whew, becomes very very painful <laughs> so does walking i mean walking is getting less pain it's still it hurts like hell to walk but it's not as bad every day i'm putting more and more weight I just want to get to the cane at least me and the walker i feel like an old woman i feel like i'm 90 you know instead of maybe 59 this year i'm thinking wait a minute am i gonna be 60 next year or 90 i don't remember <laughs> no i'm joking um yeah so just be patient it takes time it's frightening it's a big life changer so that is the emotional part and if you need you know i i told the psychiatrist when they when they sent her to my room. I said, I know I'm depressed. She goes, do you want Medicaid? I said, no. She says, you sure you want not? And I said, well, I said, I feel like medication, one, isn't healthy for me. Uh, and two, just putting a Band-Aid on it isn't going to fix it. I said, I have to face this head on and figure out how I'm going to handle it and what I'm going to do about it. And the psych psychiatrist got a big grin on her face and she looked at me and she said, good. She said, I agree with you, but I have to come in here and ask you this. And I said, okay. And, you know, it took a few months and a lot of hard work. It was my progression with my recovery. And I'm, you know, I'm getting closer and closer to walking every day. So that's what changed. I got rid of my depression. So what I'm saying is just... No, your life might not be exactly the same, but you'll have most of it may not. Um, you know, I was told I couldn't garden for a year. Well, I rigged up a way to have a very tiny, it's very small. It's going to be a small herb garden. I might do another one, but I figured out a way to keep that passion. And now I have to put it aside for at least a year. So I think I'm going to leave you with that. Blessed be and make it a joyful one.